Okay, we're live now. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, got a bit of a special one today, doing an interview with um, Fish from Nonconformist Radio Two. Uh, very popular guy. Um, yeah, just um, I think today we just wanted to have like a discussion around like the hive mind and talking about like what NPCs are. And I know this is sort of like a topic that has been covered quite a lot, but it's always nice to get different perspectives on the issue. That way we can sort, if everyone chips in, we can start to kind of highlight the bigger picture. So um, yeah, I hope, I hope you're doing well, Fish. Um, how are you doing? And um, what, do you, what do you think of the whole question we have in mind? Well, I'm doing all right. It's good to be here. And all of the right-hand path um, monotheistic religions, whether it's all of the different sects of Christianity or even Hinduism and Buddhism, for that matter, they all have one thing in common that I'm in opposition with, and that is the idea of what I call the deception of universal oneness. They try to paint this picture like the consciousness of God likes to fragment this soul into a piecemeal so it can incarnate into every body to experience the duality of good and evil. So in essence, the ego is a delusion and we need to kill the ego and come to the conclusion that, hey man, we're all one. So it's all good. And essentially there is a singularity that calls itself oneness, that all of the mainstream religions um, want you to merge with. And mm. I tend to conclude that this is an evil philosophy because it kills individuality. It's almost communistic in nature. Um, it's almost um, really uniform. Like your spirit as Nicholas is ultimately the same spirit that is me and I, I i don't see it that way at all i see it as um consciousness is segregated and it separates itself from everything else like my center of awareness has its own autonomy and its own self-agency with its own self-determinism and it exists independently in and of itself as a law unto itself and I feel that um, because spirit is such a minority, um, that's why it doesn't identify with the oneness. Uh, it sees the oneness as essentially a social waste product of what you might call the angry mob or yeah. what you might call um, the unsanitary horde masses. And I tend to be antagonistic towards the masses and everything that they do. I try to make myself the walking example of everything that they're, that they are not. I use them as an example of what not to be. Um, and I think the important solution to keep in mind for your own matrix survival is to understand that you have to disintegrate rather than integrate with what I call the anonymous blob or that of crowd consciousness. Uh, you need to segregate, and yes, I say the word segregate very deliberately, you need to segregate the superiority of the individuality of consciousness and understand that you are an individual, you are a microcosm, and you need to have nothing to do with this world at all. You have to, you have to separate it, and you have to understand yourself as an individual unit of awareness. Yes. You understand? Yeah, I mean, I, I I love the analogy of the blob. Yeah, that's it. I just see it as like one um, anonymous, ubiquitous, like homogeneous entity, which is all the same and like just various cultures and languages. It's literally just like permutations within the organism. But this the message is always the same. Like what you talk about in like your videos, it makes. It makes a lot of sense and um yeah it's just funny because it i think it, it 
uh, it just goes hand in hand with the inversion that we see as like a common theme spread out all across this reality and how um, you know you know there's this duality built into nature and we're you know we're kind of thrust into this reality with all these polarities built into us you know like there's obviously like the very obvious uh, physical traits like like race epigenetic factors um, your your physical gender but there's also like polarities in, in mind you know like thinking and feeling or masculine and feminine or like whether you are like more sort of uh, connected to intuitive perception which is sort of where we are at or as a sort of um, plug-in or sort of higher level extension of the five senses where it seems like a lot of this blob is oriented within and it's just like so I kind of see it like there's all these polarities built in yet yet that as what the blob does in its cannibalism and its need to inflict you know it's, it's it's masochistic and sadistic sort of mentality it wants to make everything homogenous with this com communistic sort of everyone's on on the same level kind of mindset and to me it just seems like yeah that's that is very natural and it's just crazy to think that like okay you can't the blob can't accept the reality that it's created that there is all these polarities built in and it it kind of like to me it feels like it hamstrings itself because it's like the only agency for change comes out of the in introverted mind which is the individual like everything I everything we see in this reality came out of the human mind so but it never comes out of a hive mind because the origin of an idea had to come not from this world at some point before it then gets assimilated and perverted perhaps this is where like the original intent of religions came from but then we see what the masses do so it's just inversion in how it perverts knowledge inversion in how it tries to make everything homogeneous just inversion like everywhere and um i think that any spirit spirited being can't help but to go against this hive mind because it's the very destruction of what you are as a sovereign entity to be like so intimately engaged with it yeah man the singularity is essentially dirty electricity that has in within it not only the seeds to its own self-destruction but the anatomy itself is a schism of juxtaposition <laughs> they give you the illusion of free choice making it seem like you have the positive side of the electricity attacking the negative side uh for instance the donkey cult and the elephant cult with this coke versus pepsi politics bullshit that we live in but at the end of the day like morpheus said in the matrix they are everyone yet they are no one and mm. i would go as far as to say that when you see a radical leftist versus your average right winger there's really no uh difference between the two even though they appear to be opposites because they are a spawn of the matrix brought about by the singularity that my spirit like a piece of steak stuck between two molars which is the blood that attracts all of the sharks to become a targeted individual in this reality in which i have no business being in um that's not what spirit is all about. Spirit is naturally going to be antagonistic towards this world. It's going to be antagonistic to the very fabric of the atom. It's going to be antagonistic towards all of the bullshit illusion of free choice that they give us, whether it's the bullshit religions that they provide or the lack of religion, atheism. It's all the same thing. These are all, all decisions that are uh, for mainstream consumption have been presupposed before consciousness even came here to essentially be booby traps okay you think you're making the right choice but it doesn't matter if you pick red or blue 
It doesn't matter if you pick black or white. It's all a part of that same yin yang that they have already foisted upon us. Yeah. So the best thing that we could do, like I said in the beginning of this video, is really go delve deep within your innermost gnosis of consciousness because your spirit has all the answers i would liken everybody to look upon their own spirit as a godhead i'm my own godhead you're your own godhead and you know if you go if you go within and listen to and, and establish a dialogue with spirit and give a listen to what knowledge will be bestowed upon you um your, your spirit will keep you safe that's when you go internal. It's when you externalize is when you run into spiritual death because you think that there's an answer outside of yourself and you start to go into all of these booby trap poisoned territories and you end up reincarnating because of it yet again because they're all designed to brainwash you, to keep you stupid, and to, and to bring your ass back here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I used to think that I, I did buy into the new age I that this is a place to, to learn so quite quite earlier on before like I fully grasped what was happening and um yeah it is this sort of um mentality of looking outside of yourself for for answers when really like they're all within it's just that I think maybe the seeking at least for me and I can't speak for everyone the seeking was just like how do I put what I already know into language because I think that the language um, this is the thing with mantra because the mantra kind of orients the like perceptual energy that sort of gets like shot out shot from the unconscious to subconscious to the ego and it kind of flips the the, the, gaze, the gaze back to the mirror so you see yourself sort of feeds feeds back into itself and um it it's like um but but really like that's just kind of trying to create a situation whereby you can become more aware with the tools that it's the egos that's designed to be like a kind of proxy that the this entity who creates this place has put to make us more separate and this is this goes along with the sort of theme that I've been speaking to Nols about in that that the tool I feel like the tools that they've given us to separate us and to which works on the NPCs in terms of playing into the duality like it, it like we're so slippery we just slide through it through its fingers it, it can't get a grip on us with its control even with the tools that it's like engineered with such position for the very purpose of controlling us like we're able to see it and actually flip 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 it on its head and um so yeah i mean definitely to what you're saying embrace embrace your uniqueness because it's not the point of the one that they all worship which is basically to worship the demiurge and the god of this physical reality that's what that's a new age concept of oneness uh it, it it's um now i i do think that there's a source but it's way outside of this okay so we know from like gnostic cosmology that um um in the original creation myth the demiurge mistook himself for being the true god of this reality so of course he's going to put himself out to be one but we can see our individuality goes beyond the scope of the demiurge's like level of defining itself as one almost like to a point where outside of this place we come maybe from different realms within the pleroma which accounts for our individuality I do think that at some point it must converge for the sake of the like concepts of infinity as a kind of unknowable alien god that's not the demiurge that is everything else yeah i believe that there is a spiritual yearning and longing 
that creates the despair that we translate in human terms as loneliness, as depression, or a feeling of alienation or self ostracization from this world. This all derives from the fact that we have a longing to return back to which we came or from which we came, which is not this realm. Hmm. This we are in a way extraterrestrials and this planet is alien to us and we have absolutely no business being here. Um, we want to return back to the realm of essentially for antimatter. This was Plato's world of forms, right? This was the world where nothing was completely physical, yet reality was malleable, malleable with the elasticity to conform <laughs> to your thoughts. And that realm, suffering was an impossibility because you can just shape, shape shift or spawn any type of a um, phenomena of what you want to experience at any given time. But this world is evil because everything is really dense and rigid and more importantly, fixed. There's a certain fixity of this reality where the concrete has dried, so to speak. And there is a st it, there's a sense of permanency. And that's why we feel like a slave to our current circumstance when it comes to working nine to five to a slave job just to just to barely have enough money to be able to survive just to j just you know that's another thing that pisses me off on a completely other note is people who say that spirit chooses to come here willingly to learn lessons or that being here somehow evolves the spirit i would say the exact opposite in the same way that i say the singularity is the demiurge and it's evil and it's something that spirit should be antagonistic to. I would say the same to this idea that we come here to evolve consciousness. It's the opposite. It's not evolution. It's devolution. We become involuted in this permanent state of arrested development called, da uh, you know, a downward darkness of a downward darkness of stagnation, I would say. Um, Think yeah. about it this way, Nicholas, man. Picture yourself sitting in a classroom, bored to death, being indoctrinated by your own government. How is spirit benefiting from that? It's not. It's, it's actually doing quite the contrary. What happens to the body happens to the spirit. So when the body and its physical brain in the formative years is getting brainwashed by society in the process of institu uh, being institutionalized, um, that is having a negative effect on spirit. You know, when you're sitting in your cubicle, being a pencil pusher in a set very job, how is that benefiting spirit when your wife is cheating on you or your husband is cheating on you for that matter behind your back? And all of this mundane, banal bullshit that is just tantamount with the epitome of everything that this reality fucking is. How is that serving spirit? I feel like the longer my spirit stays here, the more likened it can be to boiling in the bottomless pits of hell. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't see any spiritual progress that can be made. Hence, they give you a memory wipe before you even come down to reincarnate here. So you're literally born into a body. You don't know who you are. You think you're your, you think you're your own body. You know, they manufacture this this ego program where you think that you're Nicholas and I think that I'm Garrett and I think that I'm 25 and you think that you're 26. That's all nonsense, man. There, there, there's no spiritual benefit that could be gained here. In my opinion, anytime you think you've learned something as far as getting gnosis is concerned, you're merely rekindling what your spirit has already known. And the only reason why I didn't know it to begin with is because it's in a state of amnesia on account of being in this evil fucking realm that causes spirit to go to sleep. Yeah, definitely in the state of amnesia. It's just, I think the mere, I think the shock of having to descend into something so dense and then, because we, it's a very, um, even though we know that this place isn't real, it's very, very convincing because of how dense and slow and fixed the rules are. 
So it's very, I can imagine it's very easy once you descend into it. It's kind of like a, then, then it becomes a hall of mirrors where you now engage in all of these loops which kind of, uh, kind of cause you to see reality through the lens, through like a chinked lens, which is why I always say the Stemiurge does. It takes the truth as it would appear to be convincing that a lot of people fall into it and take it as truth, kind of like, oh, this place is, you know, this all, it's, it's all about unconditional love towards the end of the day, you know, don't think, um, just um, don't, you, you know what I mean, the whole new age stuff. Um, it's taken like a form from the Pleroma, the higher realms, where there's no life or death, there's no limitation of resources that warrants the state of conditional love, which is what is here. Uh, it's taken the unconditional love in that place, you saw about similar to Plato's world of forms of, of ideas, where there's you know, and it's taken that unconditional, free, unlimited state of being, where you can be in wherever you want, do whatever you want, um, and there's no, like, there's no, the natural, you know, natural law, um, objective morality, is very much tied to how the material world operates, in my opinion, because it's it's um, it's based around the conditions to not produce chaos within a reality that has scarcity, that has decay, that has like death. Every everything's limited. Everything like um, every, everyone's fighting over something. Um, goes it goes outside of that, but. Yeah, and um, so why are we here? And it's, it, it's like what you said, like, I also don't think that there's anything to learn here. We're merely reconnecting with, yes, that the platonic world of forms, which is like, we're kind of discovering principles about this reality that is just like really indisputable because it goes into like a, a realm of philosophy that's sort of based on logic and so 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 we're there and then you think so why would we have to re remember if they're saying we're here to learn in this reincarnation loop to for our own spiritual evolution blah de blah why would we have to learn something that's just evidence within the what could what has to constitute you as a sovereign being so, exactly. So, like these human lessons, they're all, and I see, I add human lessons to it because they're not lessons, they're human lessons. They're, they're within the confines of the body, they're within the confines of duality, they're within the confines of just a, cis, a fucked up system that something has thought of, an idea. That's, that's what these lessons are. It's all conjecture within a limited box of an idea of a material world inhabited by life forms so yeah like this place is just like designed to this place the case like it it is it, based on like cannibalism which goes into that involution thing that you're talking about Ab absolutely man um yes. yeah yeah um, so. well i'd agree with everything that you're saying and I want you to keep in mind, as you already know, because you're a spiritual being, I'm a spiritual being, we are essentially two spirits um, occupying a body. So your spiritual essence and my spiritual essence understands the fact that you and I are empathic by nature. Now, there's a difference between having empathy or sympathy versus being full a, a full-blown empath. When you're a full-blown empath, you feel what other people feel, not because you're part and parcel with their vessel and the state of oneness is concerned, but just out of common sense. We have a hatred, therefore, for all things that induce suffering. You know, many of us are vegetarian, for instance, because we don't want to support animal agriculture. 
that causes suffering to the animal kingdom. Um, a lot of us are, you know, antinatalist because bringing life into the world creates suffering. But then again, aborting life before it comes into the world also creates suffering. So it's a little bit complicated as far as that's concerned. But we recognize that there is this inherent suffering that exists within this realm. And we have empathy to the third degree, which isn't empathy at all, nor is it sympathy. It is empathicness. So even though we speak of hatred towards the suffering of this realm and the ignorance of this realm, it's truly a labor of love that is coming from a place of kindness. You know, when you see an animal that is suffering, the humane thing to do is put it down. And that's kind of how I see this reality. I see that, you know, these lower entities that we call NPCs, I acknowledge that they suffer, even though they don't come from the same place I come from. And they're not ever going back to the place of the plur pleroma in which I had my had the birth of my being. I do acknowledge that their suffering is valid and I don't like to see them suffer. This is what it means to be a truly moral, spiritual person. I have hatred for the suffering that they inflict upon themselves. And therefore, because they're just a self-loathing creature, they project that suffering with their authoritarian personality type on everything around them. Uh, whether it's them, you know, tying their German shepherd to a chain where it can't get the right amount of exercise, which is a form of animal cruelty, or the way they inflict corporal punishment upon their children. Maybe they bitch slap their child across the face, spank their child's ass. Um, if the child doesn't get straight A's on his on his or her report card, they ground them and take a, you know, just mistreat their children in, in the ways that they do, mistreat animals the way that they do, mistreat their um, employers the way that they do. Uh, I think it's disgusting. And all, all of the things that they do on a daily basis that I witness every fucking day of my life. Um, these are things that don't exist where we come from. And I, and I don't have it in yep. my capability to be able to perform half of the things that I see people perform on a daily basis. And that's what I think you mean when you speak of the objective morality that is inherent within the empathic nature of a spiritual being, as opposed to this world, which lacks spirit. And it is of a more inverted demonic expression of lower states of consciousness. May I say subhuman. One last thing I want to say in order to really qualify yourself as a human, I feel is to be a spiritual being occupying a body that is a human. When there is no spiritual being occupying a body that is a humanoid, which by definition is subhuman. Okay. And I think ultimately what the esoteric traditions talk about the as far as the Aryan race or the superior race is concerned, I don't think it has anything to do with skin pigmentation or what's between somebody's leg or what somebody believes in as far as um, initiatic traditions or anything like that. I think the Aryan race is simply the spirit occupying a body. And that is the divine spark. And that's the what I would consider to be the superior race that qualifies somebody as human. Um, unfortunately, people seem to think that being born a human is a given. And I don't think it's true. I think being a human is something that requires a spirit. And it's something that has to be earned. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think... Um... Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that has to be, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's earning in the sense of winning a prize, but more of like, we're sinking in like just a sea of sorrow. And if you don't fucking, you know, stop waving your, your limbs around, you're going to go under. And this is literally just like, as you're saying, every day, seeing the same bullshit happening day in, day out. And it's just like, you know, I, I don't really do like New Year's resolutions or birthdays or um, Christmas, really. Um, well, I, I 
it's like family commitments and stuff like that but I don't do it in and of myself because for me it's like every day's my birthday like I wake up every day and as far as I'm concerned this could be have been the only day in my life and all of my memories of the past were just like implanted into me um that could very well be a be a possibility um or you know it's it's, it's uh my my resolutions are constant i don't have to make them that's the f- whole thing with spirit like spirit just spirit just has this innate knowing and sort of like an unshakable will they all the npcs they give up so easily because they're so tied to the lower chakras like for me i feel like if i do that i'm literally descending and it's that inv- involution thing i'm literally descending into becoming a lower order being i can feel the essence of who i am as a crystalline sharp form with intent into becoming this like amorphous clay like sort of i don't know like it's like a sand castle and it just gets washed away with the tides like that's what these npcs are like they can be like molded and formed into whatever the super ego of the demiurgic life minds which is to this is a similar thing that i was talking to knows about in the sense of like it could be that perhaps the 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 demiurge the demiurge's unconscious is the material world as law as as laws of the physics in the material world and chemistry and biology that is like secondary and tertiary sciences from that point um but so like that could be its unconscious and then i'm thinking maybe the the end maybe the npc type is like the the subconscious of this being and then the whatever these demons that rule this place is is its ego because they're like the full incarnation of this of this thing and is what you're saying like about us being empathetic it, it kind of it, it blurs the lines between thinking with logic and and feeling because you're like sitting above the duality so it's kind of like a, a superpower because i always see some people they either like more creatively inclined or more logically inclined but like i find a spirit has like a kind of holistic intelligence where it's able to like synthesize the masculine and feminine component of the human avatar's consciousness that's just part of the duality of this place um yeah man it's just like it, the involution and just the the when you actually look at what's going on in the world instead of like your own small little bubble and everything's life's so great because you know like i'm just in the premium quarters of the prison and i haven't gone to like you know the main district and it, it it's just when you i think i really think that the world is in like an abject state of misery right now but on the most part there's small pockets of joy there's small pockets of like maybe even the unconditional love that we're talking about actually no but getting close to it you know what i mean yeah on, on the most part it is just misery and then just like yeah man it's like a yeah, man. I I concur with everything that you're saying, Nicholas. And uh, you spoke upon so much; it's hard to just pick one thing because any one thing that any gem that I pick up upon will just take us down a rabbit hole in and of itself. <laughs> That's fine, man. Um, right? Yeah. Uh, what I will say is that they speak all the time of love and light when you talk to these hindus and they're very nice people i tend to treat with kindness those who treat me with kindness but unfortunately when they speak about love and light or the hippie dippy pagan type who speaks of love and light i feel like their love and light is very pie in the sky 
it doesn't have the practicality of boots on the ground, unfortunately. And I feel, and I would, and this might sound like an extreme statement, Nicholas, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel that when most people speak and speak of love and light, that is actually the false light. And this light is actually a downward darkness of a diabolical nature. Um, when most people speak of whether it's love, truth, freedom, beauty, morality, consciousness, they are speaking of those in its lower octave pseudo form. Uh, they're not taught like when they say love, they're not talking about the same love that you and I experience as a spiritual being. OK, I ask these people all the time that love this world so much. That's why it's demonic, in my opinion, because even though they're nice and I treat them with kindness and I'm very polite to them, they love the world. That's what makes that that's what makes me think that the love and light community that belongs to the oneness of singularity is a sickness, because I think to myself, Jesus Christ, man, me in particular, I have a hard time leaving my home. I have a hard time just conducting in society because it's so painful to me. And for this product that is an eyesore that causes the triggering of my gag reflex and you look at that and you say it's beautiful i just need to be more positive i would say you can take your love and light motherfucker and you could shove it right up your ass <laughs> that's what yeah. i say you know, you, you know what love and light are you talking about your love and light this love and light that show me the love and light yeah show me and then they just then they just regurgitate a bunch of new age slogans and they never and then they go to these really abstract realms and they never really answer answer my question. I'm like, show me the love and light. And then they're like a child being born into the world. And I'm like, that's beautiful to you. A child being born into this fucking hell realm where it's going to be where its arms and legs are going to be strapped and its genitals are going to be mutilated. And they're going to inject all of this poison into its bloodstream without its fucking consent. You think that's beautiful? You're evil. Fuck you. But, it, but that's the duality there. See, the, 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 the evil people will see beauty and that which should be, um, be met with disgust. They will adorn that which should be scorn. They will take that which is profane and they will sanctify it. And that's what these love and light people are. I asked them, show me the love and light. And everything that they say as a justification is either an abstract concept that it's completely a priori in nature and doesn't make any fucking sense or take something of a physical nature that I can just completely rebuke and say, no, this is, this is, this is what you call love and light is what I call something diabolical. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very, I can barely tolerate the new age types. So I know exactly what you mean. And it, it's like, it's what you, a very good point about the lower octave empathy, because Whatever it is, I find whatever excuse they give for this world, as in like the kid being born, the beautiful sunset, the wonderful meadow. And bearing in mind, I never came from the position of initially wanting to come to this sort of um, nihilistic conclusion. It's just I'm like you, I'm like saying, well, where's the evidence for it? I want to see what it is. Can you point it out in the objective world, please? But then, like you said, it's, it's, it's like the lower octave empathy, not as it is, but how they want to see it. Because the, if you are just of this place, then you have no choice for the sake of the foundation of like a sort of very perfect excuse for the existence of an entity, you have to protect the only thing you have, because we're coming from the point of view of saying, fuck this, like, I don't even belong here. They're here, so they need to, that's, this is like the program that they cannot break within the NPC population. And it's like the beauty they see in the world is only in regards to anthropomorphic forms i.e. something that falls in line with uh, what is 
in resonance and in sync with the human body. So, for instance, when you talk about the pagans or the New Age types, they're very, or the Druids, that they're, they're very nature type. It's a very nature type consciousness, and they 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 see the benevolence of this like feminine entity, Mother Earth, because the the anthropomorphic feeling they get they get is in regards to the body and its natural rhythms. Of course, they want to be out of the cities because that's just that is a lower order extension that came out of the human ego. They want to return to a program that's more in line with the principles slightly above a layer of the onion slightly above um, modern cities, which is nature, which is where they come from. But it's like the beauty that they see is just purely conjecture within, like I say, yeah, something that is anthropomorphic, something that is relatable to the human. So I think it's like, I think maybe that's a possible reason for why they, they can't just lay it out on the table like we have, because they cannot see it and they have no no choice because they are sort of part part of it. And it's it's like um the beauty it's like yeah I forgot I forgot the point I was gonna make. Um yeah well, you made a lot of good points. You you've used the word anthropomorphism to describe their delusions of what they ascribe as divine and the word anthropomorphism is appropriate sure. because this is taking something that is a human man-made quality and projecting <laughs> it on something that ultimately isn't appropriate or doesn't really exist exactly right so i agreed with everything that you that you were saying and um, here's an analogy that I would liken what you said to that would be appropriate to the subject at hand. I think this realm is, like the Gnostics said, it is a bad copy of the real world. So when you see the illusion of beauty, which is for all intents and purposes beautiful, whether it's the grass of God's green earth or you know, trees with leaves of green and, you know, these types of things, things that are aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, this is essentially a copy and paste reality, or rather, this world is a replica as far as form is concerned, just like Plato said, um, of a world that either no longer exists but we still yet have a longing to return or it's just waiting for us in open arms to come back to. I'm not exactly sure, but here's the analogy. Let's say you go to the, the heart of darkness deep in the bowels of the jungle and you got a butterfly net and you start to kidnap chimpanzees from their natural habitat. Then you go ahead and you put them in a cage at your local zoo and you give them um, an environment that mimics their natural habitat. You give them trees that they can dangle from. You give them grass. That's kind of what this world reminds me of. It's kind of like a zoo. We're kind of made on a spiritual level to be manipulated into thinking that we're in our natural habitat. But mm -hmm. really, it's a zoo. And we need to... And, and it's inhumane. It's cruelty. We We need to get the real thing. You know, sorry for this crude analogy, but you know, you can either fornicate with an actual female or you can stick your dick in a pocket pussy. You know, I don't know about you, but I would prefer to have the real thing, Nicholas. This world is the real thing. They're giving you a pocket pussy and everybody thinks that it's, um, everybody thinks that they're getting laid. This world is fake, man. It's fucking fake. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I appreciate the, 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 the <laughs> No, that, that that's that's very true. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's just it's just ridiculous at the end. Of, it's like it's like there is there is that there is that beautiful benevolent aspect of nature just because of the plagiarism and the plagiarism. But then you could be in say a, a 
just a peaceful meadow, meadow, say midsummer, just green grass everywhere, rolling hills. But then, and you say, this is it. If this, if this isn't it, I don't know what it is. But then they're forgetting about the blades of grass that they're crushing, the weight of their body. They're forgetting that there's a whole floral war to, to, to grow up fast enough to gain energy from the sun. They forget that there's bacterial wars, there's fungal wars, there's wars between different species of insects, you know, ants and termites, there's, there's, there's birds picking worms out of the ground. It's, it's all, it's, and, then you, and then that, that, that sort of rose-tinted look at the world then be- reveals itself what it is, which is just the same thing, or the strong consuming the weak. Just how this reality is set up, this this order, this 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 is also goes in, into the theme of why it's also imbalanced towards suffering. How like there's this constant uh, attractor towards this order, yet we have to suffer to maintain the order of our bodies and our forms by loosing. We have to suffer to make and exchange it for order. You know, like. The, the energy that we get from food so the body can repair itself etc and it's it's just like how is it that i can see this and you can see this and this you know bearing in mind i'm a very positive person because this this truth although it sounds um misanthropic it sounds nihilistic it's very dark I would take it over any other delusion because, and this is why I think we need to start getting ourselves out of the mindset that like, this is like a negative, this is negative, this is very positive, because when you can see it for how it is, that's when we truly have agency and control to do something. It might not be to uphold, you know, upturn the entire reality, but we can actually do something. These new age people are saying, oh, the fifth dimension is ascending. The, I don't know, the, the, the gods from the aliens from Zeta Reticuli is going to recontact us or the sun. It's a savior thing. It's this give religious mindset. It's, it's basically worshiping the demiurge, just in a different form, like saying how it just pokes its head out everywhere. And it's just like this truth, if it was accepted by the masses, which is n- not possible just because the nature of this place could be the very thing that turns the tide against this conclusion. But it did this goes back to the point talking about the demiurge as an entity and how it's just this thing that needs to be like put out of its misery. Because it it's like clawing onto this existential dilemma of having to feed having to subjugate the energies of creation just to, to sustain itself because it can't do it out of its own nature. Yet it's it's solution to all of that is literally right in front of its eyes takes no effort on its part just takes nothing just requires for it to instead of subjugating just fall in line with the rest of the creation which is about um collaboration instead of imprisonment instead of enslavement and it's just this thing's just as fucking retarded as any other um right see and i think this is why the, the gnostics called it the blind idiot god or something along those lines, because it's just a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's so much suffering within the master-slave dynamics of the human kingdom, let alone the predator-prey dynamics of the animal kingdom. Um, you know, for instance when it comes to the beauty of illusion, I feel that the world that we come from, there is no carnism to begin with. Um, Whether it's a lion eating a gazelle or what have you, like that sick, depraved shit that we all take for granted as just the natural law of the behavior of nature, that's that's disgusting. That that, That type of shit could only exist here. And I honestly feel just as much sympathy for the lion as i do with the, for the gazelle because the lion was endowed with those with those claws 
and those sharp teeth of fangs to tear into that flesh. And if it doesn't, it's going to die and it wants to survive. When it's hungry and it needs to hunt, it like it's suffering. And it's unfortunate that the gazelle had to die that was running for its life. And often it's the child or the one who's the weakest, who couldn't get away fast enough, who becomes a casualty. But I feel just as much sympathy for both of them. And I and I think, why, if this is a benevolent, loving God, why would it create a system where every organism feasts upon the flesh of an organism that is weaker than its own? I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty sick, man. You know, a lot of New Agers, when I ask them, show me the love and light, they'll say, look at the birds singing in the trees. That's a product of God. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's easy to listen to the beautiful songs that a bird would sing up in the trees. And that's okay. But you, what you're not taking the, into consideration is that birds are, you know, digging into the flesh of a worm, which is a life form. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, um, whenever there is a, um, and this is a fact when it comes to birds, whenever there's a, uh, a chick link in the nest, that the mother perceives as weak or inferior, um, it's going to kill it. It's going to knock it out of the nest so it can be eaten alive by the ants. How come New Agers never talk about that aspect of nature? They talk about nature like it's this beautiful, benevol benevolent thing. But I see it as something that is ultimately abominable and unnecessarily so. It shouldn't be that way. But whoever created this matrix designed to suffering to be tantamount within the very fabric of its design um, one more example I can give is a panda bear. You know, everybody think, oh, panda bears are so cute. And you just see just a fat, lazy panda eating some bamboo stick in Japan. But what a lot of people don't know is pandas will have two cubs and they will eat the, they'll eat one of them, which is the one that's the most inferior. So it's self cannibalizing. It's, it's, it's own offspring. And it's like, what, when you really study zoology, which most people don't do, which is the behavior of the animal kingdom, what you perceive to be beautiful, whether it's the birds singing in the tree or the pan lazy panda bears of Japan eating their bamboo sticks, there is a sick, depraved aspect of all of these creatures that you, that, that you seem to use as a justification to support the benevolence of nature. Uh, they're, 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 the evil is inherent within this fucking reality. It, yeah, yeah. And it's just um, what makes it even more diabolical is how, remember what I said about how like the Demiurge will take truth and chink, chink the looking glass, so it distorts its vision. So that's essentially what it's done with the nature of, um, or the, the essence of Sophia, who I think is actually this Mother Earth entity, is that it seems like nature is possibly her her shadow. It's, 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 as she has created the demiurge in ignorance of source, as the, the myth says. But so we, we see we see her um, we see a depletion or like as you said, we're in the zoo, we see the depletion, the copy of what she represents as an aeon within the pleroma. But and because uh, the M yeah the NPCs are just fueled into creating this sort of, um, this sort of, these sort of conditions that call, sort of coerce like spirit into falling in line, which it, it can't do because it, what I said earlier, the, it, the tools designed to subjugate us actually works to wake us up even more, but that's aside from the point. Um, so it's kind of got them attached to further illusions by seeing nature through rose scented glasses which just sort of compounds this onion effect where each layer down the inversion is a new proxy of experience a new abstraction a new control terminal through which you now experience the world through a lower octave of experience of lower lower resolution and it's just like so the way I kind of see, like we had the we have the pleroma, and at, at some point to, for the concept of infinity and unknowable alien gods to the human mind, somewhere along the line, 
there's this inversion system. You've got various etheric, um, astral and etheric bodies, and then there's the physical material, material, material worlds, nature, uh, unconscious, subconscious, ego, society, culture, uh, now the metaverse, which is even basically the demiurge trying to copy the material world, but at a lower resolution, denser with more restrictions. And it's just like, but the, the, the thing that I always take back is that we can always see what it does because we, we understand its nature intently. It goes with that. M uh, uh, with that empathy, not only for anthropomorphic forms, but for principles as well, to see it, see it for what it actually is. And yeah, man, na nature is fucking brutal. It's um, like, like I've I've seen safari videos, like the analogy of the lion and the gazelle, like or boars getting fucking eaten alive whilst it's you know, like guts fucking being ripped out. Just All hanging still out. alive from the downward up. Sorry. Yeah, while well, it's a, it's being eaten alive from basically yeah. the crotch upward. Yeah. Rather than straight to the throat, it's got to be. It's got to experience all that pain on a regular basis in the animal kingdom, being eaten yeah. alive. You know? Yeah, like where where its genitals are as well. It's even more fucking painful, and it's just like, why can't we? And I think this goes back to the point, like, they can only see the world through how they want to see it, not as it is, because they're like, they are the anthropomorphic bias. They, they literally are the emotions, they are the mind. There's no operator acting through a proxy from outside of it, which is where I think we're at. Like, I, I know we're already liberated, and it's kind of like it's we've never even gone in because um, it's kind of it's this machine that kind of takes our free will and creative energy off the Paroma and sort of hijacks it, piggybacks it and orients it in a sort of unholy masculine way, which is what masculine energy is about. But obviously with all this sadism and cannibalism. So, but it's kind of like where I've gone in, but I always, I think like, because we're ultimately in the reins of control, because the Demiurge is a byproduct of a place where we come from, which is high law, but we're only, we're only here and experiencing density because we have to interact with its tools as it's extruded yes. from its mind by way of proxy by way of like representation metaphor what, as opposed to who we what are I, yeah what i should have clarified based upon the good points that you brought up just now in the beginning of this video is when i was talking about the dirty electricity of the singularity that identifies itself as oneness of love and light of which we are all a part that very monstrosity is the demiurge that is the demiurge so when we talk about this being a bad copy of the real world what we have to keep in mind is these beings that we see um that a lot of us in this community have called npcs are essentially the incarnation of the demiurge and it really is a oneness man like for example as strange as it might sound not that I would encourage anybody to do this, but if I was to go, or anybody for that matter, was to go to like a mall, and there's like a bunch of innocent bystanders running around assuming that none of them have a spirit. If I was to like punch one of them, one of them in the face, and then punch just another bystander in the face and run away from them after that, I've essentially punched the same entity. Um, when we look out the window and we see this cookie cutter society, or as the... Uh, um, uh, well, um, as the green wizard said the uh, conveyor belt people mm. cookie cutter people mm. they are essentially the the, the 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 
the spirit of the demiurge, which is spiritless, but ironic, there is a sort of anima of based and anathema animating these bodies, right? We can call it the uh, the anima of anathema, which is the spiritless spirit that animates the bodies of the NPCs. That is really the spirit of the demiurge. So when they say that God wants to fragment itself and incarnate into everybody at the same time, that doesn't apply to us, man. We are an individuated spirit with its own self-determinism. Okay, but when it comes to the horde consciousness, I would say that that's a true statement. So when people are telling you that they identify with oneness and that they're a part of that oneness, I wouldn't try to change their mind because they probably are. Um, yeah. There probably is a, a vile oneness that does exist, which is the incarnation of the Demiurge himself. And what we have here, when we have people who identify with that consciousness, is basically the different aspects of the Demiurge. Um, speaking through the vocal cords of the ones that we love, which disturbs us on a, on a daily basis, knowing that the people who we care about the most, who probably are not of the Pleroma, are um, in a way possessed by this demonic spirit that has literally hijacked their personality. It's very disturbing to see that in society. It's very disturbing to see people who we care about um, eyes rolling in the back of their head, so to speak. Like I went to a uh, a dinner recently and a family member was like, I'm going to continue to get these injections as long as it takes. I'm going to get boost. I'm, I'll, I'll get a hundred boosters till kingdom come if that's what it takes. And she was just, just nothing but piss and vinegar. Her eyes, in my opinion, were like practically rolling in the back of back of her head. Like she was possessed by some kind of a demon that's like, yeah, not only will I get it for myself as long as it takes till kingdom come, I'll, I'll, I'll stick it in my children as long as it takes till kingdom come. And I'm like, wow, this demon is showing its true colors because they can give you the delusion of politeness and decency when you're being cordial in a formal gathering or even a recreational gathering, having a beer with a friend. And you can think, yeah, yeah, I know this guy. This guy's all right. My family member's all right. But as soon as you provoke them a little bit, their eyes will roll in the back of their head. Their toes are going to curl. They're going to start shaking and convulsing, and you're going to see them for the demons that they are. You just have to arouse the demon out of them. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, there's this, sort of, there's this bullshit kind of um, etiquette that they've made in sort of uh, in the world, in the NPC world where to be You've got to kind of fake, like, fake your emotions. You know, how are you today? Everything's good, thank you. You know, that sort of thing. And it's it's like, they so they always say, oh, you need to account for everyone because everyone's different. And, you know, there's different cultures, there's different ethnicities. But it's always, yeah, <laughs> I, I see, I see, I see, yeah. It, it's always within the confines of permutations of this anthropomorphic instinct, this like to account for like cultures or sexual orientations, whether they be embedded in biology or created from a liberal mindset. Um, just, but if it's, it's got to be within the local instance or permutation of the hive minds at the given point in time as cultures change and merge. But what I've noticed is that ever since sort of like the dawn of civilization in the Neolithic, like whether it had been um, 6,000 years ago, assuming the Euphrates, or as like new like evidence, like some might even be 11,000 years in the past, like go Beckley Tepley, but whenever that started, there's always been like a common trend in history, which has been this constant state of war and sort of um, uh, uh, unholy masculine dominance complex. And they just sort of, 
they can't seem to get out of this net or this web that they're caught caught in. Like you said, they are they can't help to do what they do. But I think the fact that we can talk about this comes from the point that we are we are spirit incarnate. So we're literally at least for me, like literally talking about everything in kind of like from a third person perspective and observatory perspective where there's no stake in the emotional effects of it it's like but there's a kind of which is the low octave love being influenced by your emotions in that way such that it distorts the way you see the world such that you can only see it through rose tinted glasses our empathy is more from the point of it just makes logical sense that if you want to survive as a sovereign being within a rule set like this, then collaboration is like necessary because and not subjugation, because through subjugation you're even destroying yourself, which is what why the psychopathic mind or the narcissistic mind is like a subhuman mind, because it's literally a cannibalistic aberration of human consciousness in this multitude of forms that is um did i say cannibalistic um it's, it's basically cannibalistic and it's just uh there's this constant it's like its own kind sorry that's, that's, well when you say cannibalistic i think of inflicting harm upon your own kind not necessarily mm. eating the flesh of your own kind but like symbolically you are so low as an organism that you would inflict a great deal of suffering upon your own species which no other animal in the animal kingdom does um i mean there's certain anomalies where a lion will eat another lion but that's very rare uh for the most part most organisms as opposed to humans will attack other organisms but it will be for the it, it'll be a benefactor to its own kind humans aren't like that and i think that that's what i think when you use the word cannibalistic you're you're, you're talking to a being that is psychopathic that would actually um harm its own species you see i feel that you and i Although, as far as the form of our body is concerned, you would assume, because of my light pigmentation and your darker pigmentation, that we are a part of different races, perhaps different um, locations geographically. But I don't really see it that way. I see that as a delusion. I think you and I are ultimately a part of the same species. Uh, you and I ultimately come from the same place. And you and I ultimately are the same organism. And when you look outward and we see this entity that we call it NPC, uh, that is yeah. a different species. That is a different organism. And it fucks with our heads because we look at civilian bystanders and we think they look just like us after all. So we must be a part of that species. And I think that is that is evil deception. What these people are that we call NPCs, not only are the demiurge incarnate, but merely are calcified thought forms, or rather an apparition that gets projected by our minds, brought about by the matrix to make us feel as if, so they can lead by example as the majority and we can follow the herd. Well, I'm a part of this species, so I might as well just do what everybody else is doing. But in all actuality, you and I are part of the same species. And it's not the human race. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. It has to do with something that goes beyond that, that presupposes this space-time continuum to begin with. Uh, I feel that you and I are essentially a part of the same organism. And people with spirit in general are part of the same organism. And that's why they have separated us from our own kind. That's why you're in England. I'm in California. I talk to people from Australia. And they're either across the country at best, across the world at worst. And that's all by design. They have us all fragmented towards all four corners of the earth. They do that deliberately. Technology definitely comes at hand as far as reconciling that 
mm. diabolical dictate. But um, yeah, I think, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah, we got, this, we got this lower organism that masquerades as a human, but they're really not human. They're just a fucking they're just a thought form made physical that is a spawn of this matrix. You and I are the true human because we're spiritual beings occupying a body. Okay, it's recording now. Yeah, just a minor interruption from the uh, demiurge. I think it was the one last thing you spoke about was um, separateness and how they've separated us. Oh yeah, and I think that's what I was going to say. Because um, I, I think it's like even if you're in the presence of someone else who's aware of this within the vicinity. The compounded effect of us coming into resonance with principles that are immutable, immutable, unlike this place where everything is mutable, everything is like a sort of dark inversion of something that's not whole from something else. Everything's in duality. And it's like, uh, the presence of each other kind of amplifies this uh, drawing drawing back the curtains, like to see what's behind the stage, sort of an, an effect. The illusion crumbles, the Maya starts to disintegrate, because it's like one of the major, major tactics I, I feel that they impose onto spirit is this gaslighty kind of um what's it um uh, rush rushed by an insurmountable horde of entities trying gaslighting you and invalidating your own experience to bring about doubt within yourself because i i always when i was in my teenage years up to my early 20s like, i had very low self-esteem just because I, I couldn't understand why it just seemed like the nature of my being was just wholly incompatible with everyone else, everyone it seems, like no matter which group you join or which community you want to be a part of, you just end up seeing that they're either caught in a net somehow playing on one side of the pendulum or, or the other, they just don't see the full picture and it kind of it's quite sometimes it creates a sort of nihilistic feeling of loneliness and also a kind of a sense of pointlessness and futility in what it is that they say that they want you know what i mean absolutely it, it, it's kind of a tantamount to the feeling of unemployability i feel like everywhere I try to employ myself for financial opportunities, I'm essentially degrading myself. Um, I'm essentially, you know, cleaning up after people's messes or participating in something that I don't agree with. For example, I'm a vegetarian. I don't agree with animal cruelty. So in order for me to get a job at like, you know, a fast food conglomerate, I'm basically compromising my integrity and I'm participating in something that I have uh, no agreement with. Um, there's this feeling of unemployability to the extent that I feel as if everything I do to s some way or another is degrading. And not only in the workplace environment, but when it comes to movements that I want to be involved with, um, I feel like they are subpar. And for me to join any kind of a movement other than maybe Gnosticism as the very exception, um, I feel like I'm subordinating my integrity just to have a false sense of belonging. You know what I mean? And it's that false sense of belonging that I, uh, that I attend, that I tend not to agree with is, um, are you able to hear me? Okay, Nicholas. Yeah, I, I think it should be fine. Yeah, it's, it's not too loud. All right. To refresh your memory, I spoke upon the fact of unemployability and also unrelatability. I feel like it's impossible for me to feel a sense of belonging, um, whether it's in the workplace environment or some type of a community that I would, that I would involve myself with. Um, I feel like there's this sense of 
just the lack of willingness to participate. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, very similar thing to me, like whichever work environment I go into, I end up becoming uh, ostracized. And, and at the end of it, you know, they don't tell you outright, but they're very like passive aggressive or indifferent or, you know, they can just, they can't even pinpoint within their minds like what it is, but it's almost like a subconscious kind of repulsion because everything that you are is about the truth, not from the point of arrogance, but a kind of curiosity to just see things as they are and to even just talk about it. And because you see so deeply into it, you don't want to talk about the polarities that they're involved in. And if because they, they, they are the polarities, they it's kind of like, I think it's almost like a jealousy as well. Subconsciously, they don't know consciously, but they get a kind of alien impression about people like us. And it's basically the hive mind supercomputer telling them not to engage in it. Otherwise, a spirit might incarnate by accident. Or, or, or whatever it is but yeah it's like um but it, yeah it just goes to show that like i guess i had always been even before i conceptualized the idea of unconditional love in my mind i'd always been sort of seeking how you could bring about that ideal here but as a truth seeker as well and just looking at the avail with the available information and the ideas that I've been exposed to, even out of body experiences, like through meditation practices or even um, like hallucinogenic substances, like all the evidence seems to point to that is just an impossibility here. And it's just like whatever uh, the NPCs will do, what they're doing. But it's like there's a kind of false hope in that they're seeking something that's just almost like an impossibility. There's like a there's like a futileness to it, which is why like which is why the whole thing of anti natalism just sort of makes sense to me. Like, and I don't. It, it, it's not like it's not a big deal to me because I would. There's, 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 there's incomprehensibly infinite amounts of alternative realities, permutations that's been thought up within the mind of the Pleroma for you to um, create individualness within that isn't, you know, confined to what this place seems to be like a bad thought in the mind of God. Like, it's okay, like... If this whole thing disintegrates on me, I've got no stake in the outcome. It's like, the, you know, the new ages, they're always looking, they're always seeking for something, and they don't even know what it is that they're seeking. I think people like us, we just know to the point where we don't even engage in some kind of, like, the whole, of course, I, I don't mind going traveling for, ho for like a holiday or something, but it's not like, a big thing that I need in order to discover myself or like find something that's like outside of what I already know is like I don't we don't need to seek it when you when you remember which is to put the disparate parts of yourself back together you you remember that you know this shit already it's just that we've been put into an experience that has co-opted our free will into creating our own sort of hall of mirrors and the resolution to that is that we've always been outside of this matrix. We've never even gone in. It's just that this is all by way of concept, conjecture, and by way of like proxy that this whole thing is like being experienced. So yeah, really, man, just no, no attachment to anything, no stake in the outcome. Exactly. And you're free. Um, yeah, man. Um, when it comes to the unemployability the unrelatability and the sense of not being able to belong to any type of movement or what have you, except other than maybe Gnosticism. This to me is symptomatic of 
what I refer to as transcendental nihilism. It's a feeling of pointlessness where because this wor- this realm is so inverted, no matter what it is that we do, it just feels um, utterly pointless and completely void of meaning. Um, I have, se- you know, most men who are my age in their mid 20s, you know, they're concerned with being an entrepreneur and, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're concerned with, you know, this, 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 this sense of how am I going to be able to be my own boss and financially support myself? And how am I going to be able to find love or even on a superficial level, you know, how can I get laid? Um, how, how, how can I find a sense of belonging? Honestly, when it comes to transcendental nihilism for me, um, it seemed to have made me almost completely asocial and to some level even asexual because I just have such an extraordinarily hard time being able to relate with people that I feel are either not of spirit or perhaps they possess a spirit that has not been self-actualized. I just can't find any way to relate to this world in any way, shape, or form. Um, I would say the main the main symptomatics would be being asocial and in my case the older i get the more i become a- asexual even like i just have no interest in yeah yeah um, and you know. i can i can and i know like we can only i can empathize with that and i know and that's another thing of empathy how it can only really be felt if you have had a similar kind of experience otherwise because to them they have no idea the kind of existential pain that this kind of experience brings for kinds of entities like us though they have no idea like what it's like and yeah it's like it just reached the point for me like sometimes where i kind of i would like to not have um i like to be like asexual i like to be asocial but one like I'm wired like for for sex I'm, I'm wired for this tribalism which is all about it goes hand in hand with the survival because I'm forced into a world of scarcity so it's this really fucked up dilemma where you're being forced boot on the neck to like engage with this reality yet it wholly rejects you at the same time so I'm just thinking to myself, what the fuck? And then it's just like, um, yeah, but this, I think, because um, we've been going we've been going for a while now, this, I think this sort of leads to um, the kind of... Closing point? Yeah, like sort of like where we're all separated across different continents and shit like that. And it's actually very refreshing talking to another another being of, of my kind um, and just having all of these ideas and thoughts confirmed and even in resonance and enhanced through diff- a different perspective, a different concept. So um, yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing that we'll be talking about, like perhaps making a sort of um, telegram group um, where it's like, un- they can't censor us. and yeah like perhaps um people can we can have conversations with amongst ourselves and other people who want to talk about like what could be going on here or what could be possible solutions or like we could do like skill sharing or whatever it is um like i i do i do like software engineering so i could like i'd be willing to like help people learn some of that stuff because there is a point to infiltrating their metaverse which um yes perhaps one of the things i'd like to talk to you about in the future we can actually use their tools against them and um yeah like uh, yeah man if i i i completely support and promote your idea of creating a sense of community because when it comes to that feeling of unemployability and being able to you know be unrelatable to anything else in the world the only thing that spirit can relate to is spirit just like that old um proverb 
in the in the Gnostic Bible, looking at it from a Gnostic perspective, hmm. you know, that which is of flesh is flesh, and that which is of spirit is spirit. And I, as spirit, relate with spirit. I don't relate with flesh or any type of um, mundane, banal, cardinal stuff like that. And I have a sense of belonging when I speak with somebody like you and my particular YouTube community. And I do experience a sense of belonging with people who are of spirit. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to reconcile the fragmentation nature that it has deliberately separated spirit from its own kind to figure out a way to put spirit back in unison. Yeah, exactly. It, it just seems like perhaps this perhaps this whole journey of isolation so far for everyone all age groups as well like was kind of necessary because it's the very conditions that sort of allow us to reach this conclusion but and it's a huge like test amount to everyone's like strength to just be able to re you know accept like certain hard truths that are quite horrific about this reality and very like very nihilistic um for me i just find it interesting thinking about uh if we can dissolve this reality's illusions just the two of us like imagine what like maybe 20 or 30 or even beyond that could do um there's definitely a lot of like fragmented like talents and skills that I see and it would be interesting to see if like we could try and do something in whatever way it turns out so um or even if like people just need to let out emotionally what they can't do with say like a counselor or some someone like that because let's just face it like they're all part of like the the medical industry um they have no idea like what like part of our problem is actually the fact that they're trying to like offer like psych psychological help because of what they're well i don't need to explain it but yeah it could I, i'm not sure what it would be because it would not just be like our telegram group like is is, is everyone's but it's like all I'm saying is that it will be interesting, and I think if, if anyone wants to um, to join, um, yeah, we'll, we could probably just leave a link in the description. Absolutely. So it's, it's called it's called a sanctuary, so it will be exactly like a sanctuary. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What an appropriate name, because really, what it sounds to me as like a uh, like a safe haven for yeah. consciousness, a yeah. place where consciousness doesn't have to worry about being under hive mind attack or becoming a targeted individual you're not you're you're, you're governed by beings who are incarnate in, in in flesh but really it's spirit occupying the body so everything that the body does is an extension of the spirit that occupies it and that spirit is very loving and it's non-judgmental it, it will accept you at your level and hopefully it can be a place for uh, people like us to evolve and to really be surrounded by the camaraderie and the friendship and the love of our own kind. Not the quote unquote pseudo love, truth, freedom, beauty, morality that the false light of the singularity espouses, but the real deal, the real Gnostic sense of the word love, truth, freedom, beauty and morality. Not the not 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 the way the mainstream media likes to use those terms. Yeah, so like just ideas can be thrown around without you know without attachment. Um, I'm very open. Like one of the things I notice in this particular community at this stage is a, there's a lot of fragmentation over like minute details. It's like the way I see it. If you're over fifty percent of the way on the path like to gnosis and that's that's fine whereas like most people in the world i would say is 
less than 1% or 0% actually. So, and that's, I think, is just another thing that the Demiurge has on us because we all have these blind spots that we can't see and it, it has set it up such that we trigger, we can even trigger each other, which is just like a more embedded program of the control, in my opinion. But the interesting thing about the group, and we'll know infiltration because you'll get that kind of closed-minded mentality, but we can actually point out each other's blind spots and facilitate shadow work. So, yeah, I just see like, you just talk about ideas, facilitate each other's healing, um, and share any skills that we have. And yeah, we, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Nothing could happen at all, but I, I don't, I don't have a feeling that it's going to be like that. But yeah, it'll be just something we haven't tried because I swear, like on some, some videos, <clears throat> you could even, you could look at one video a year ago and look at another one today and it, you could swear that it was just like they were re recorded um like sequentially to each other like so yeah well it'd be interesting to see like how we can try something else and like just what will happen yeah and, and i would also like to speak upon the importance of the most oppressed minority in this world being spirit and the importance thereof of it finding a way to come together for its own therapeutic benefit of catharsis and a sense of belonging because let me tell you something when people speak of even the possibility of a mass awakening unfortunately i don't mean to be the black pill bear of bad news but that is an impossibility because what we call the masses is really something that is unsanitary and it is governed by laws that is algorithmic brought about by the matrix that you and i have nothing to do with it's very important to get spirit mm. in community with its own spirit because even though we're individuated as individuals and we are a law of ourselves, okay, we are our own nucleus with its own center of awareness. That doesn't mean that we can't, it, it's like going to an old neighborhood and getting in, getting into contact with old childhood friends from the Pleroma is the way I look at it. Um, yeah. But with that being said, man, would you agree that when you hear people talking about the possibility of a mass awakening um i would i would say that that is completely um idealistic because at what when when you throw a dart at history anywhere you throw that dart it's all splattered with bloodshed where the masses are always depicted as being a lower organism or a social waste product that just goes along with the herd and commits atrocities onto its own organism as in the sense of self cannibalization, as you spoke upon earlier. So why do people think that at this point in history, it's possible for humanity, for humanity to somehow pull its head out of its ass and be able to smell the coffee and see the for forest <laughs> for the trees? Um, I, I, I honestly think that it's an impossibility because I see the apparition of the calcified thought form of a demonic nature that we call NPCs or the artificial intelligence is really a collective entity, a part of a hive mind, which is a schism of juxtaposition. And the, the, the possibility of them waking up is honestly an impossibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I really think so. They make it seem like there's a, there's a linear progression of, throughout history. And I, I personally think that we could have well have been going through cycles or even if history even has happened and we're just in like this weird snow globe type time loop where time began in like, I don't know, the, the 19th century in, in reality and everything else is just a lie. But it, like what we see now is no different from 
any of the other theistic kind of um, control structures, which are just right brain imbalance. They've just the demio just literally shifted the gears on the high high of consciousness towards left brain, highly um, atheistic. When really, like the atheism and scientism is the left brain aberration of this worship of the demiurge. It's the same fucking gods as the Abrahamic gods, or Stephen Hawkins, or fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson. Those those kind of priests of like the scientism cult. But it's like I think in terms of awakening, there's always been a group of people, vast minority, who have just been aware somehow. And like, look, if if you haven't realised what's going on after the past two years, I don't know what to say. And it's not that we have to wake these people up, not because I'm just a cunt or something and I don't care about people. I, I did try it when I was younger. But it's just it, not possible. Yeah, it, it's just like they, um, if they were going to awaken, they would do it with or without our help. They would, I, I, it's what I was talking to Nos about in one of my podcasts with him. It's like, I think about what distinguishes the human from, the, from an animal. And like, yeah, they can teach various apes sign language, but the ape will never ask a question. And what sort of questions do the NPCs ask? Very animalistic anthropomorphic type lower nature questions or questions that we ask and it's just the this mindset it's this particular mindset of asking questions about the existence of reality who you are and just this recognition of an experience as as opposed to just being like a weird aberration of the experience and so I, re- I really think that you're either awake or you're not. It's something you're born with. And there's people who are like at different stages, but it's like, you know, from the point of being born to the age of seven is when like some like 80 or not to 90% of your personality is formed and the whole subconscious back structure within the plastic brain. But then, and then everything up to around the age of 35, is just that extra 20% added on layers on top of a core foundation. So it's such a short amount of time that the, the human vessel can become resonant with. So we see these people stuck in the new age and various types. They've poked their head out of the water, but they've never tried to like swim, swim to shore. The NPCs are like drowning. We're just saying, oh, look, there's some shore over there. And uh, I'm getting a bit tired. I think I'm going to you know, just stretch on the beach and relax with a cocktail or something. That's what we're like. But then but then you've got all these NPCs who are, like, pulling us, like, trying to pull us back into the ocean. <laughs> and it's, like, um, trying to, like, climb on top of each other to, like, to use as leverage for them to get above the surface of the water. But really, all they've got to do is just realise they're, individuals they're sovereign just stop climbing stop pulling each other down and just fucking you know calmly swim your way to the surface you know <laughs> but they don't I agree. I agree with you well the uh the npc unfortunately is a humanoid and it is therefore a part of the animal kingdom and if we observe how animals behave in nature um that is tantamount to how the homo sapien behaves it is very herds like with its mob mentality and there's no individuality between these robots i honestly cannot differentiate one lout from the other um it's like you just have this big giant cunt and one way or another they all are a part of that cuntiness <laughs> and for those who want to separate themselves because they recognize that they're because if we were a part of that big giant cunt then we would have no problem with integrating with that but we want to disintegrate we want to say no i want to practice the principle of non-participation i don't want to be a part of your shit show for a for a clown world i want nothing to do with your inverted hell realm and then they try to suck you back into it and then they'll take this big giant cunt 
and they'll say, no, this is the singularity of divine oneness, and it has everything to do with the love and light of who you really are. And I tell you, you take that love and light and you shove it up your fucking ass because that is not what I represent. I understand that this is a realm, which is a bad copy of the real world. And pretty much what it is that we see is Maya. And therefore, it is a delusion. And the people who we see running around one way or another are more or less not only part and, part and partial with that cunt that I spoke of earlier, but they ultimately are a sentient figment, which is a byproduct of our consciousness be, uh, and, and, and only being able to perceive them on the level of our mentality of perception. Okay, I say that they are a figment of our imagination. Okay, they kind of they're kind of literally just spawns of the matrix. Yet at the same time, I don't negate their sentience. I think their tears of blood are valid. I think their suffering is valid. And I would like to put it out of its misery because I know that there's nothing that can be reconciled as far as that abomination is concerned. But what I will not have is people who consider themselves spiritualist or esotericist who try to tell me that this singularity is a piecemeal of which I am a fragment a part of. That 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 that's gonna that's gonna piss me off. People people who tell me I don't have individuality that it has the capability of existing outside of this body or outside of the space time continuum. And let me tell you what, man, spirit presupposes the space time continuum and spirit presupposes the fleshly body, and all of the matter. I would go as far as to say that the atom itself is the demiurge. And we can't go into agreement with the mind control methodologies to try to make us identify with the world. We want to be in a state of permanent rebellion where we spit in the face of this disgusting matrix to the point where we recognize ourselves as a separate entity. And the only question from there onward is how to get the fuck out of here, okay? Here's the principle that I live by. One, all that is born is cursed. Somehow we fucked up by coming down here. So we have to recognize that. We have to put our ego aside and we have to recognize we're not supposed to be here and we need to get the fuck out of here, okay? So once we realize that we shouldn't be here and we got to get the fuck out of here, okay, all we got to do from that moment onward, is try to wake up as many spiritual beings as possible. So they too can come to the realization that we're going to have to, uh, you know, kick these archons straight in the balls and get, you know, and not fall victim to the, to the trap of reincarnation and get the fuck out. Okay. And once we all, as, as, as much as me as a spiritual being can wake up spirits as possible, once we get out of here, we have to figure out a way to unplug, so to speak, this, monstrosity because this is an abomination and it should not exist we we can't we have to stop identifying with the world and stop being worldly and figure out a way to be in the world but not of the world and not only not of the world but antagonistic to everything about it because it's 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 a disgusting shit show and it needs to be destroyed it needs to be unplugged yeah yeah i mean i'd say that this is like um yeah, we're here, and my only real purpose for continuing this experience is to just spread this information as, as far and as wide as I can. Um, not for them, for the great awakening in the new age sense, but it's more of like a distress beacon or uh, to, to sort of sounds that there's a kind of evacuation process going on because this thing has already been unplugged and th what this is is just like time as an effect has been printed but it's only within like the frame of perception of our experience within the material world but as far as i'm concerned because where we come from from, this, from outside of space and time it's literally already been unplugged and actually we never even went into the machine but it's kind of like i think that some of us can get stuck in these like loops of time so where like personally i feel like it's just saying that there's an evacuation process going on if you don't get out because like 
we can't wake someone up. It has to be of their own will, through their own self volition. But we can like help each other with the, the blind spots, help each other with the shadow. Because this demiurge has put us in different bodies with different um, health effects, with di different epigenetic expressions based within this like zigzag kind of like polarity based system of never being whole within yourself always being like impartial and not seeing the entire picture but yeah like we we can kind of by coming together we actually fill in these gaps that has been put, built into the human as like a sort of design flaw in my opinion and um it's not it's not dehumanizing like just from an objective perspective to be talking about the NPCs like we do. This is not negative. This is just saying it for exactly how it is. This is what they do. They can't help this like cannibalistic behavior. This is not like, and this is just another program thing, like to make us, you know, cause they always, we are, we are somehow always the evil ones. We're always the bad people. You know, we're the ones that they will target. It's not like that at all. And, um, yeah, I just think, um, yeah, so we, we need to we need to come together. It's probably like the next stage. But um, yeah, I mean, man, I think it's um, been going for like one and a half, nearly one, nearly one oh, hour. Oh, we've been, we've been going uh, well over an hour and a half, but you're probably going to have to do some editing because of the shitty internet connection and the distractions that took place on my part, which I apologize for, but I have, I have faith. Unfortunately, I hate to, I hate to put that, load on you but i i have faith that you're you're going to be able to edit it and present it on the internet in such a way where it's going to be uh clean and it's going to be coherent so thank you for that and uh thank you also for uh, interviewing me if you would like to contact me my youtube um well my youtube channel is nonconformist radio 2 and my um you can add me on facebook at fish corbett f-i-s-h-c-o-r-b-e-t-t -T. and uh uh, I've always considered um, Nicholas here to be a personal good friend of mine. Um, funny thing about Nicholas is um, he's been around since my very first channel. And in point of fact, I recall uploading my very first video to YouTube on my old channel when I was uh, only 20 years old. So this was almost six years ago. And I got a notification that I felt so proud of that indicated that I got my first subscriber. And that man happened to be nicholas he was i didn't not, even know that <laughs> yeah if not my first subscriber you were definitely like the top like like 10 I, I do remember getting the notification on my first video when i didn't when i had like zero subscribers so you've been around since the very beginning and um i look upon you in a very high manner um and and, and it's been a pleasure uh being your friend and getting to know you and i hope to be able to um do another live stream with you in the past. And I couldn't think of any other person to conduct my first interview with, but you. So uh, you've conducted a good interview and I would like to uh, uh, thank you for that. Oh yeah, no worries, man. It's a pleasure speaking to you as well. Um, it's always nice to talk to people like on a similar level. You know, I don't feel like I'm boxing, like I don't need to explain. You, you know how it is in it. So yeah, it's, it's very refreshing, man. And um, I enjoyed it and yeah i think we can do we can do another one of these at some point um absolutely yeah um, one last thing i would i would want to say not only for my audience but your audience is just to keep in mind the principle that everything that is seen is untrue when you look out into the world stage understand that those are just pawns on a ch on a chessboard being moved by principles and principalities of an archonic nature belonging to the demiurge of which they are part and partial with. Um, they are really one with that force. So when you look out into the world and you see all of this shit happening, understand that at the same time, it is very real. There are people who are receiving this injection. Most likely, spirit is born or is endowed with a certain understanding where it's not going to receive that injection and it's not going to fall victim to the things that the NPCs are involved with. So when you see the world of the NPCs go to hell, understand that you as an individuated 
consciousness are not a part of that organism. And I hope that that provides some comfort for people because I understand that it's extremely difficult to be alive in this intolerable realm. And if I can provide some comfort, it would be that um, the people who get the injections and start dying and start becoming um, quite uh, sick in a short period of time, um, it's very it's it's going to be very tragic and it's going to be very sad. And my heart goes out to people who are going to suffer as far as that's concerned. But understand that you are not um, a part of that consciousness. You are a separate entity that has been individuated from that consciousness. And um, you existed before the creation of this construct was even a twinkle in the masturbatory fantasy of the Demiurge's eye. And you and, and, and we're, we're eventually going to get the fuck out of here and we have no business being here. So, yeah. so with that being said, thank you for conducting this wonderful interview, and uh, I will catch you on the flip side. All right. Yeah, cool, man. It was um, it was very poetically put, and yeah, I'll just say like, in closing, like, to what you said, yeah, it's 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 not you, like they would make it seem like it, it's actually them, like they are the pro they are the problem. So don't 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 let it get to you. Um, yeah, loved it, man. Um, my channel is um, the Sovereign Flesh Avatar. Gareth's channel is Nonconformist Radio 2. And um, take care, everyone out there in the Matrix. And um, speak to you next time. Cheers, Gareth. Goodbye.